These damn Chiefs just seem unstoppable. Even in a season where they seem to fall behind their usual pace, when January came, it's like they hit a switch, rolling through the field with force and earning their place in yet another Super Bowl. Let's take a look at some of the ways this offense has upped its game in the playoffs. With modern defenses sitting back and splitting the field to confuse today's quarterbacks, there are two main ways to take advantage of this. Run the damn ball and overload one side. We'll get to Pacheco in the run game in a second, but first, let's discuss the offense's use of splits. The Chiefs were the first team to make heavy use of 1-4 splits. That's four offensive weapons to one side of the center, dating back to last season. However, with the sheer amount of split field coverages we're seeing this year, the Chiefs weren't stressing this nearly enough. That is, until January, when Andy Reid unloaded the clip, finding all manners of variations, motions, and shifts to get to this look, allowing Mahomes to process quickly and find the correct read. Here's a great example. Miami are in their favorite cover six, which would usually allow them to offer a numbers advantage to where the most threats lie, but with the Chiefs having four split outright, it's a one-on-one -on -one game, and a clever route combination creates an open Travis Kelsey. MVS will head down the boundary and then cut in on the post. Rice will run in out and up. Pacheco heads out to the flat, and Kelsey will attack the middle of the box coverage by running the seam and then curling into the space. The safety is playing with deep leverage and has to watch the outside receiver in case he cuts in. But this gives Kelsey way too much space to work with, and with Pacheco taking the backer with him, Mahomes has a wide open throwing window and receiver to hit. Presenting a too high look here, the Ravens will use their beloved pressure package to send the slot and roll to cover three. But again, the overloaded four strong finds Kelsey in the same weak spot. Justin Watson's over route pulls the dropping Roquan. Ronald Darby is pulled deep by the go, and Hamilton heads to the flat to track Clyde Edwards Hilaire, allowing Kelsey to curl into the same intermediate space for another Mahomes strike. The Chiefs have busted out all manner of variations to get to this look. Here, they start out in five wide, but get to the one four split by bringing Pacheco on the orbit motion. The Ravens do a good job to shift into a cover six in an attempt to stop the overload, but the Chiefs' clever design creates an easy underneath throw. MVS will fly up the seam, causing Roquan Smith to backpedal, and Rashid Rice will chip block before curling into the underneath space. There's no one there, and Rice can hit his man for a shimmy and a first. And here's more motion to open up an underneath throw. In a condensed 2x2 two two look here, it's Rice's turn to motion, flooding the left side with four receivers. The Dolphins all back up scared of the overload, opening a wide open throw to Rice in the flat. Splitting four to one side can cause the defense to hyperfocus, allowing you to bring a crosser from the far side into wide open space. Kelsey will short motion inside, taking the attention of the backer before laying a clever pick on the mic, who's responsible for any underneath crossers. MVS and Watson have the remaining defenders preoccupied with the same post out and up combination, and the safety's eyes were spying Kelsey, meaning Rice can practically jog in for the score. Man match zone isn't the only defense played, and the Niners are likely to play a lot of man to try to stop them, believing they can out talent the Chiefs. But Andy Reid always has man beating options built into these concepts. When Daxton Hill mauls Kelsey off the line, Mahomes knows he's got man coverage and looks to his sail route on third and medium. With the Bengals only rushing three, Mahomes makes this 40-yard pass look routine, dropping it in the bucket to Justin Watson. When you know man is coming, there's some great beaters you can run from the look. It's Watson's turn to short motion, creating a bunch, and the stack release creates wide open inside leverage. Patrick's quick on the trigger, and it's another first down. As spoken about in our 2023 meta video, defenses are begging offenses to throw to the flat. But this doesn't mean it's a bad option. You've just got to go real fast. They're also big fans of running it out of the 1-4 split too. But watch how quick Mahomes is to pull the trigger for the screen when he notices the narrowness of the Ravens' D, overruling the play action and getting the ball straight to his man. And this is one of their favorite ways to get their best offensive weapon involved. Kelsey really has it all, and that includes the quick game. Tight ends really shouldn't be threats on quick screens, but Kelsey is more a transformer than he is human being. I love this design, and it completely catches the Bills off guard. With three tight ends on the field, this looks almost certain to be a power run to try to get the last three yards. But again, the Bills play too narrow, allowing the Chiefs to pull off a quick smoke screen to Kelsey. Great vision from the big man spots the edge, and the power gets into the pylon for the score. The connection between Mahomes and Kelsey is one of the best we've ever seen, 
and it is dangerous in all areas of the field. Miami thinks they can get away with blitzing the backer over Kelsey, but Mahomes and Travis are completely in sync. Kelsey hot routes to a little curl, and Patrick is releasing straight away, attacking the quick underneath space. Kyle Hamilton covered every blade of grass possible in the AFC Championship game, but even his perfect coverage wasn't enough to disrupt the duo. Kelsey's got the whole right side of the field to operate in thanks to the alignment, but Hamilton doesn't bite on the fake, sticking like glue to Travis when he shows the fade. The coverage is as good as it can possibly be, but the connection is even better as Mahomes throws a perfect back shoulder ball, allowing Kelsey to outmuscle Hamilton, pirouetting for the catch through contact, then giving us the emphatic spike. The combination of Mahomes' unreal accuracy and Kelsey's catch radius continuously claws the Chiefs out of doomed scenarios. On fourth and short, the Chiefs go to one of the oldest plays in football, sprint right option. The aim is to create a pick and an easy throw to the boundary, but Darby plays is great, muddying both reads for Mahomes, Yet it simply doesn't matter, as Mahomes manages to work to his third option Kelsey, throwing a perfect precision laser off his back foot to where only his big man can get it. And this is all before we get to the backyard bullshit plays. Kermit actually misses two reads here for the first, confused by the Ravens' roll to Tampa 2. But he's just gonna extend, and extend, and then extend some more, then dance his way out of the sack, keeping his eyes on his main target and creating space to throw the ball across his body while getting crunched. And yet, that's not even the best piece of athleticism on display, as Kelsey somehow shakes loose of the coverage for a diving swan catch. I mean, bruh, well, what are you supposed to do here? What are you supposed to do? In terms of timing and elusiveness, Mahomes is the best scrambler in the league. I know we don't think of him as a runner because of his preference to dance and throw, but he knows exactly when to use his legs to break a defense, and scampers like a pack of hungry wolves are after him. It's another motion into a 1-4 set here against the Bills, and they do a good job to cover everything, but nobody accounts for Mahomes' legs, and spotting the empty left side of the field, he takes off. The magician makes 31 leave his feet with a pump fake, then shows great runner's vision to use his blocker, sneaking down the sideline for as many yards as possible. And while we're talking about running, it's time to talk about the game breaker. While it's not in Andy Reid's nature to run the ball, power and pads of Isaiah Pacheco have given him no choice. Running like he's going through therapy, number 10 packs one of the nastiest power punches in the league while having the scampering skills to juke you and leave you in the dust. With the Bills condensing down the line, the toss is going to get them quickly outflanked. But pay attention to Pacheco's feet. As soon as he spots the gap, he shifts gears, sprinting through at speed, setting Micah Hyde up with the giddy-up step before making them tackle thin air. And only a last-ditch attempt by Poyer keeps him out of the end zone. Here against the Bengals, the Chiefs will run stretch left, a play Andy Reid usually isn't a big fan of, but it's perfect for Pacheco's skill set. Watch the decisive feet to weave in and then back out, avoiding two arm tackles and getting to the second level. With Jordan Battle having a good angle, Pacheco knows he can't beat him to the edge, but doesn't just run out of bounds, looking for contact and to have his presence felt. The first man almost never brings down Pacheco, and you're gonna need to bring all 11 guys if you want to contain him. Again, with the toss play against the narrow playing Bills, Pacheco was once again met with the player to beat. Watch how late he cuts to force Poyer into a bad angle, shrugging off the attempt and using those fast feet to find more yards inside. And here it is again. The Chiefs do a fantastic job to create an alley for number 10, but Deshaun Elliott comes down into the box to meet him in the hole. But Isaiah just brushes him aside, then lowers his pads into the next safety for every available yard. This being an Andy Reid offense, you know there's going to be a lot of creativity, especially in short yardage situations. In the condensed 1-4 split, Pacheco initially looks like he's going to get the handoff and follow his tight end Noah Gray. But this is actually a counter run, with Pacheco putting his foot in the ground to cut back left aiming directly at the gap vacated by the backer tasked with chasing Hardman on the orbit motion. Great work on film to notice that this would work, and Isaiah won't be denied on the goal line. On third and short, the Chiefs motion into split backs with Pacheco and Richie James both in three-point stances like it's 1980s ball. But the personnel is important here. The tight end swaps sides, taking Hamilton out of their desired running lane, and then James will motion to remove another defender before Mahomes pivots 
and hands off to Pacheco on the quick inside plunge. The Ravens are stout up front, but the design creates enough space for Pacheco to power for the first. Be on the lookout for this on Sunday so you can look like Tony Romo to your friends. If Pacheco is in at fullback, it's going to him. So how exactly do you counter Mahomes? Well, it's a question the league has been asking for five years, and one I don't know how to solve either. You absolutely gotta stop the run, because giving Mahomes short downs is just gonna end in disaster. They've been run on throughout the playoffs, but this cannot continue if you wanna keep the Chiefs in check. They've certainly got the personnel on paper to do this, but they've gotta stop it early and force the Walrus to shy away from these calls. Next, they must have answers for the Chiefs 1-4 split because the Niners love to play quarters and as we've shown, the Chiefs know how to attack that box coverage. I think they're likely to skew heavily towards man coverage on Sunday and try to out-talent the Chiefs' ragtag receiving core. But that means that somebody's got to step up and have the career game against Kelsey. I envy no coach who has to game plan against Mahomes because if there's any vulnerabilities in their preparation, he and Reed will find it. Will the Niners take advantage of their second chance? Or will Mahomes be leaving Vegas with a third Super Bowl ring?